What are the best ways to get more business from people you already know? What's happening? JC Agajanian here, broker associate with the Whistle Realty Group, bringing to you the Monday morning mastermind recap as we do every week. It's put on by the Fast Forward Network and is chock full of super experienced, high producing realtors, typically between three and 600 of them from all over the country, weighing in on just adding value and helping people increase their personal production. So today we've got three great topics. First of all, Growing your sphere business. How are you gonna grow that sphere of influence business and make more transactions happen, end up with more commissions from the people that you already know? The next one is creating what we're gonna call a transaction status update video. How are you gonna keep your clients up to date on every step of the process without you physically calling and emailing all the time once they're in escrow. And finally, what is the best way to hire a new assistant? We're talking about in-person assistants today, not virtual assistants. So let's dive straight into the first topic, which is growing your sphere of influence business. If you are a new agent, there's an important kind of precursor. You've got to understand that it's going to take a little while for the people that you already know that knew you as maybe the college kid or the person who does this other job or whatever the or person who's out of work to go ahead and acknowledge and really accept the fact that this new thing, this real estate thing that you're doing is really your new career path and that you're going to stick it out and this isn't a fad. The best thing you can do is use patience and social media to show social proof that you're really doing it. Document the stuff you're doing in your day, what you're going to, what kind of appointments you're going to, what sort of administrative tasks you're doing. Document all of it, especially if you're a brand new realtor. Make it clear to the people that already know you, that knew you as someone who did something else, that this is truly your new like profession, you're putting all of yourself into it, and that when the time comes, they're gonna be safe giving you a shot at that business as opposed to someone else that they've known, maybe not personally, but they've been aware of who's done it for a long time. This is where the agents that have been farming that person's neighborhood are gonna be able to stand out because they have had the consistency and the benefactor of time going on over years, whereas you may have a much better relationship with them but you don't have that track record yet. So just put it all into perspective and understand that there's a little bit of an uphill battle when it comes to sphere business for the brand new agent. Now, speaking of social media, there's a huge piece of how we go about using social media that is lost on most people. And that lies not in posts or reels or stories or whatever else you wanna do to get yourself out there. The secret lies in comment sections and direct messages. There's actually a lot more power in sliding into people's comments and making nice, maybe uplifting, any sort of remarks really on someone else's post. That's way more powerful than just blasting a just listed, just sold for every member of the team that you've joined in the whole company and making it try and seem like, you know, this killer agent out there when you came out of nowhere. One great way to go about it is just to come from contribution. It's one of the core values of our real estate team that we're on. The idea is to come from contribution, but without expectation. There's tons of different things you can do to add value. A few ideas are, you know, the basics. Offer home valuations for all the people that are in your sphere of influence and depending on where they live, maybe you can come up with an idea. Like, this doesn't apply to people here in California, but in other parts of the country, you can you can apply for a homestead exemption. Maybe they haven't done that yet and they can lower their taxes. Here in California, you can actually appeal your tax base and you can lower your taxes that way. So maybe you're just straight up saving them money one way or you're telling them what the place is worth. There's lots of different things you can do to come from contribution, but that not only helps them, but it also sets you apart as the person as who has an authority and understanding and is bringing knowledge that they maybe didn't already have to the table. And if you are successful in saving somebody some money out of the blue, like they're gonna love you. And the chances of them going to somebody else next time they need to sell are pretty low. You're probably gonna be their man or their woman at that point. We kind of glossed over it, but before we even get to any of this stuff, it's highly crucial 
that you take every single person who's ever been in your phone and put them in your CRM when you get into the business or if you haven't already and you've been in the business. Of course, you're gonna isolate them by people that are in your territory and maybe family and friends that are not living where you work, but these people should all be receiving any sort of messaging, any sort of items of contribution that you're offering anyone that you know. And then there's also memory jogger sheets that you can do. And, and the idea behind the memory jogger sheets is this just a huge list of various types of professions, services, industries that you can think of and go, oh yeah, I didn't even think of my barber. I've been giving that guy my money every single month for 10 years. He can definitely stand to hear some messaging about real estate from me. I'm, I'm his client, he can also possibly be my client one day. Those are the types of memory joggers that we look at. Anyone you've ever given money to, they should also go into your sphere of influence list. Put that in the database and that, that group of people in your database, they're gonna get specific sphere of influence messaging. They should not be getting the same type of messaging because you could turn them off. Gifting, how about gifting? <laughs> Just straight up giving people things that are nice. We do that inside of our business. It's not just for our sphere of influence. We also do that for our past clients. And there's some great tools. I mean, you don't have to sit down every month and rack your brain over meaningful, kind of appropriately priced gifts for each specific person on the list for that month and then figure out how to get them out in the mail and the best way to deliver them. It could be a real bear. Today in the mastermind, somebody brought up a company called Low Low Gifts. I don't have any experience with them, but apparently it's some sort of local gifting program that you can sign someone up for and automatically hook them up from time to time. I use a different system called Client Giant and there's lots of different programs. You can sign them up for just one uh, home anniversary gift a year. I like to do the quarterly gift sequence that gives them something every few months. And this is not for every single client I've ever worked with, right? At, at this point in my career, that list is simply too long. So what I've got to do is focus on my sphere of influence that I want to really love on. And the idea is to just remind them, hey, we're here, we're loving on you. I know it's been years, we still appreciate your business and we're looking forward to working with you. So. Gifting is a great tip too. With your follow-up calls, now you should have a reason for them, right? The best reason is to invite them to something that's free, that they're gonna like, that's cool. And what we do is quarterly events. We actually have one coming up in just another week or so here. And it is a blowout in the park. We have all kinds of things, huge blow-ups for the kids, an obstacle course, a cornhole tournament, we're, we're gonna have the In-N-Out food truck come out and supply everybody with a free lunch. There's drinks, of course, there's other games, there's face painting for kids. It's, it's a big thing, something that you would picture a small town putting on for their community members, that's what we're doing. And we're gonna have hundreds of people there, right? So you don't have to have an event that large to accomplish the same goal. Because the whole point is, to send them an invitation, what we do is all fronts. We put a nice, almost as nice as like a wedding invitation, a nice invitation in the mail that goes out. We have an email follow-up. We have a phone call. We have a text. We do all we can to reach them, right? And because the real point of the entire quarterly event is the phone call that you're making. It, whether or not they come, hey, it doesn't really matter because what matters is they heard from you in the mail, they heard from you in the email, they heard from you on the phone and you had a conversation in best case scenario. Sometimes you don't reach them and you've got a lot of people to call and invite, but you wanna call with something that you're offering and asking for nothing. These are for past clients, these are for sphere of influences, and these are for people that are maybe prospects on your radar that may do something in the near future that you haven't really gotten into a business relationship with yet. You're still kind of just chatting or maybe you've had a few conversations with them. The whole point is to have another conversation where you're not saying, hey, you ready to make a move yet? Or, hey, how's that house doing that we sold you a long time ago? You're not just having a purely real estate conversation. You're having just a meaningful conversation where it's like, hey, can you do this? It'd be cool, It'd be good to see you, you can hang out. I'll you know, have some beers or I'll have some whatever, some seltzers for you. That's more of a natural, human, real conversation that you're gonna have with people. And that's the type of stuff that, that ties bonds stronger than just follow-up calls and things like that. But while you're at that, there's nothing that says you can't be direct and you can't ask for some business while you're at it. You can ask for a referral, you can see how they're doing indirectly and check if they're considering making a home again. But when you're making the calls to invite somebody to something for free, when you're actually offering something of value, you're coming from contribution, keep in mind 
This could be a business conversation. It just doesn't have to be. You want to keep it natural. Moving it in that direction is part of the process as well. Handwritten notes seems like a, a thing of yesteryear that people don't really do anymore. They are powerful. One agent actually said that he's just been doing tons of handwritten notes for years and it really pays off for him. He has a sequence and he'll do a birthday card. He'll do a wedding anniversary. He'll do a Father's Day, a Mother's Day, a home sale anniversary, anything else he can think of. And he'll send handwritten notes out. In addition to just the notes, for certain things like a birthday or a home anniversary, you may need to figure out how to automate. And that's exactly the position I found myself in. So we use a company called Send Out Cards. And it is clearly not handwritten, but it's pretty close. A lot of it is set it and forget it, so we don't have to redo it every single month. But when you're dealing with a past client database in the hundreds, handwriting a note for every single one of them each month that applies to one of those different anniversary dates or celebration dates, you can't do it anymore. It's more than worth it. And I highly recommend adopting something like that in your business as well. Don't forget about the simple selfie video. You can just record a quick video for a birthday or whatever the case may be and shoot a text message. That's something that people aren't doing either. It's almost as rare as a handwritten note. Like these are just things that are more heartfelt and more meaningful. So considering consider those for some of these events as well. It should go without saying that, you know, a consistent video newsletter should go out, not only to your sphere of influence, but also to any prospects, leads, people that you're working on, working with. You can do a physical mailer if that's something you're into, but in this day and age, video really rules. And so that's why we're doing our market updates. That's where we're doing our helpful hints. That's where we're doing our neighborhood events that we're just making people aware of. These are all through a consistently sent out video email newsletter. And you know, like I said, make it helpful. Nobody needs a new recipe for dinner that happens to coincide with whatever holiday is going on right now. Like that is old news. People are going to delete it immediately. Make sure whatever you're putting out, act as though you're writing it to a good friend of yours. You know, fancy header with blocks of color and images or a footer and like lots of heavy pictures and things. Just write it like it's an email to someone you know. You can embed a link in there to your actual video so that people will go and see it, but have some sort of intelligent copywriting. Have Test a hook, you know, make some sort of solution to a problem that you've got in that hook and draw people in to be interested in what you're writing. So you wanna do something that people are actually interested in reading and will happily click that link because they wanna hear what it is you've got to say. So keep that in mind on your newsletter as well. We are gonna move on to creating transaction status update videos. This is something that I've actually done twice now. <laughs> Fortunately, our team is really large and for everyone on the team who has not taken the time to record their own videos, our team lead, Kyle Whistle, has done that and he sends them out on behalf of our agents for their clients while inside of a transaction. You know, congratulations, you've gotten your offer accepted or congratulations, you accepted an offer. You know, we've got 10 steps on the buy side and we've got 10 steps on the sell side. These are videos keeping people abreast of where they're at in the transaction and what to expect coming next. So there's never a question about what's going on and it, it's just, it's extremely helpful for the client. And it's really just a backstop, making sure that we are doing our job and that there's no concern of the client being uncertain about where they're at, what they need to do, what they can expect from the other party, whether it's a buyer or seller on the other side and what sort of timelines they're looking at, right? That's the main point of these transaction status update videos. The idea is to operate under the assumption that if a client ever has to ask for what's next or what's going on with the status, we've failed, right? They should never have to ask that. And that's the whole point of these videos. We are here to create an amazing experience for our clients. And this is just one of the ways we can do that. So like I said, 10 videos on each side, cover the entire transaction process within these steps and just make it light, but informative at each time. The way you distribute the information can vary. We have a whole system once we have a buyer or seller 
in escrow. It's a transaction management system that our TCs use that we have access to as well. And we have a system of emails that go out with and without these videos that I'm talking about. So at every step of the way, these emails are going out and it's pretty much plug and play for us. Our transaction coordinators handle all this for us. But if you don't have that going on, you can just create the videos. You can make a uh, playlist on YouTube. And then you can create a simple email like we just talked about with our marketing update email, something that makes sense, that is not filled with a bunch of photos and, and eye-catching things. Just, hey, here's where we're at. Embed the link, let them know. And then if you don't have a system like we use, you're just gonna have to make sure that at each stage, you predetermine what that's gonna be, maybe upon acceptance and you know letting them know when the first contingency is removed. And then you send that video, you're gonna to have to develop your own cadence on how you do it. We've got ours going on. There's lots of different ways you can do it, but the important thing is that you get it out and that you get it out with consistency and that you get it out in appropriate timing so that they know what's going on in their transaction. It doesn't hurt to create one image to use on a regular basis. I mean, you can also, if you're gonna be putting a bunch of this stuff in emails, it's good to make the megabyte size of these files as small as possible. So you can go find something online that will make those images smaller. It helps with delivery and it just show a little step by step like the name of each of your videos could be in each step and you could show hey today we're in step three and this is the video that coincides with that it's not rocket science right you can figure out how to make these things and and how to slide it into your workflow but but that's the important part is actually thinking it through getting it done and then implementing it so that these clients always see you at every step of the game through the transaction and they know what's going on and there's never a question of what's coming next all right, so finally, we're gonna move on to hiring a new assistant. Like I mentioned earlier, we are talking about hiring an in-person assistant, not necessarily a virtual assistant overseas, but there's lots that goes on in this process. And there's different opinions on how to do it. Hey, you should hire a staffing company to find you the right person. It will only take you a few thousand bucks. Um, they will do all the screening for you and they're gonna whittle it down to three to five great candidates, at which point you can start the interview process and do whatever you're gonna do to make sure you've got a good hire going, right? So another way to go about it is to post an ad in a website like Indeed or something else with, you know, clear explanation of the job description, the expectations of the position, and then you can use kind of a task, a workflow. You can figure out how to start sorting the people down and screening the process out early. And there's different tricks you can do that will help people to auto screen themselves, right? So if you need an admin or an assistant who's detail oriented, well, throw a weird detail in there in the job description, so if you're asking for a resume, say, put your resume over to me in all orange ink or all green ink or something silly like that. It doesn't have to make sense. Just see if they're gonna pay attention enough to read that, change the coloring of everything and send it over to you. I mean, that's a great way to just say, everyone who didn't do that, I need someone who's detail oriented and you didn't bother or you didn't catch it, you're out. There's other ways you can do things like this as well, but there's a great workflow that I've got that I've used in the past I'd be happy to share that with you. If you'd like, just shoot me a message and I can shoot you my, my A to Z. I've got a whole document on how to go from roughly, I think the last time we worked with it, we had about 160 applicants. And without too much effort on my part really at all, we were able to get it boiled down to the same amount an agency would get for you to about three or five good candidates where I then did some interviews there and move forward. Another way to get somebody that you think might be pretty high quality is to ask for some referrals. They work great. Ask past clients, ask people that you know, friends of yours, you can make a post online, one of the social media sites that you like to use, and just work through the vetting process that you've already got set up or the one you've borrowed from me if you want to reach out. The important part and part of this vetting process is to look for someone who's kind of opposite of you or is qualified to do the tasks that you're hiring them for, which is typically going to be things that you're either not that good at or that you don't want to do yourself. Right. Great tool for that is to use the disk profile system. It really helps get an understanding of the personality types of people. And you can use that to hire towards a specific job that you need done. A great tip from Kyle this morning was to never, especially here in California, maybe in New York and some other interesting states legally, don't hire someone as an employee right away. You know, unless you're 100% certain this is the perfect person for you, 
hire them as a contract for a week, two weeks, three weeks, keep it under 30 days to see how it's gonna work out. He shared a nightmare story of someone who was just grossly incompetent, and he was so glad that he hired him on as a contract, and then at the end of that period of time, he said, it looks like it's just not gonna be a good fit. We're gonna need to go ahead and continue our search and look for someone who's gonna be a permanent solution. You know, you keep it professional, but he saved himself from a huge headache uh, it would have been very difficult to fire that person immediately after he hired them. And he probably would have had to pay unemployment and lots of other fees and things like that. Another kind of final thought is to consider whether you actually need an in-person assistant or can you get away with someone who actually is a virtual assistant and a, a remote worker living overseas somewhere else. There are amazingly talented college educated people with little to no accents in all parts of the world that are working as virtual assistants and they can, they can do really good work and keep you in great shape depending on your specific needs. Sphere Rocket is a great resource for virtual assistants and the VA network is another really good one that I've actually used myself and I'm really happy with the results. So that's all we've got for you today. I hope you've found this helpful. You know, our main topics being growing your personal sphere of influence business, creating transaction status update videos, and of course, hiring a new assistant, or in some cases, your first assistant. As I mentioned throughout the video, feel free to reach out here. I've got plenty of resources on all these topics, and I've done them all myself. Uh, lots of experience here, so I'm happy to share. And of course, as usual, I hope you found something that you can take and apply and execute in your business today. Instead of just filling your head with knowledge, go ahead and take some action. I'll talk to you soon.